Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today it's episode number two uh, on how to build your own rock crawler, rock buggy, or rock bouncer. Today we're going to talk about drivetrain. What drivetrain you need and how to set up the drivetrain in order to start building the chassis. So last episode, if you missed it, was about materials and tools required to start building your own buggy. Uh, so basically, after you buy all the steel, what I personally do is because full length of steel, they don't fit in my garage. So what I do, I cut them in different lengths. Uh, some of the length are uh, 16 foot uh, length. Some of them are eight foot length. Some of them are 20 foot length. And I do that for every single piece of steel that I bought, the different types and shapes. And in order for me to fit them in my garage, because remember, this is only a two car garage. I don't have a lot of space. And anyways, uh, you know, eventually you're going to need to cut them. And the goal here is to try to minimize the off cuts. And honestly, I've had good luck. I didn't have a whole lot of wasted off cuts. So uh, this technique seems to be working fine. In regards to the drivetrain now, so basically this is all a matter of choice, whatever you like to use uh, in regards to axles. Uh, basically, you can either go with uh, one ton axles such as Dana 60 and 14 bolt in the rear, or you can go with rock wheels. However, both types of axles need to be upgraded in order to, to, to use them, uh, depending also on the engine and how much horsepower and the tire size, etc. But eventually, if you're at this stage, you should know what kind of drivetrain you need. So basically, honestly, if I had to make a choice again, you know, it's a tough call. I really like rear steer axle, and the cheapest way to get rear steer is to go with rock wheels. The only problem with rock wheels is they are a little bit heavier. Not too much, a little bit heavier. I would say maybe 100 to 150 pounds uh, per axle, heavier than a Dana 60 or 1 ton axle and a 14 bolt. Uh, however, the nice thing with them is uh, that you can basically build them bulletproof for fairly cheap. Bulletproof, I mean, you use a uh, 47 spline, 2 inch uh, diameter or 2 inch diameter axle shafts, and these are pretty much indestructible. And the U joint on the on the Rockwells is is very very strong. Um, it, once again, it all depends on what kind of what kind of budget you have and what kind of drivetrain you really want to use. Uh, so basically the uh, the Rockwells, the nice thing about them too is they have a 6.72 axle ratio which is which is really good too for um, for off-roading. Uh, um, the Dana 16 and 14 bolts you need to re-gear them lower in order to use them with larger tires. Alright, so um, I got my axles uh, set up uh, in place and I know what axles I'm going to use. Now in order to decide now on the drivetrain, well once again this is a matter of personal choice. Uh, if you're kind of doing this build on a budget, I highly recommend buying a junkyard engine, uh, a newer junkyard engine such as, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the 6 liter Chevys and the 5.3 liter Chevys seems to be very popular. Uh, and they provide pretty decent horsepower, you know, stock. So this would be my, my number one choice. However, if you're interested in building your own engine and going wild or different than anybody else, well, you can do whatever you want and you can build whatever engine you want. I personally chose um, a, a 460 big block Ford because that's what I kind of had in my Bronco buggy. And, you know, I'm fine with it. You know, it's uh, going with big block versus short block versus, you know, four-cylinder engine. It's all a matter of preference. It's whatever you want to build and what you can afford. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Even four-cylinder engines, they do really well on the trail. Uh, as long as you, ling uh, you build a, lo a lightweight buggy that goes along with that engine. So it's all a matter of matching the components and this comes with experience. So you watch other people what they have and you pretty much decide on your own what you want to do. So assume now that you have bought the drivetrain, um, you have a decent transmission and for the transfer case now, you pretty much need to make a choice again. Uh, I, be I personally went with an Atlas 4-speed. Uh, it has uh, 2.72 as well as 2 through 1. 
uh, reduction box. So that gives me uh, 2 to 1, 2.72 to 1, and 5.44 to 1. I'm mostly, the m large majority of the time, I just use 2 to 1. Uh, maybe 5 to 10% of the time, I use the double low, which is 5.44 to 1. And this is mostly for rock crawling, like when I'm off-roading at Rush Creek Off-Road Park, which is all rocks, and I try to climb very slowly. But, like I said, 90% of the time, I'm in just in 2 to 1 for the transfer case. So, honestly, you can just get away with getting a 2-speed transfer case, as long as it's, it's strong enough. So, basically, now that you have your drivetrain, what I personally like to do is I clear the spot in my garage and I place my axles uh, at right height. So, at right height, what I mean is that if the tires would be installed, this is the center line of the axis, axle would be at exactly the same center line as if the tires were installed. So in my case, I, I'm running 43, 44-inch tires, so I, I set the center line of my, my axles at 19 inches uh, off, off the ground. And I make sure that they're, they're, uh, they're level, and I make sure that they're square, so I measure diagonally from the, uh, from the kingpin knuckle, and then I make sure that they are actually perfectly parallel to each other. Once that is done, I like to assemble my engine, transmission, and transfer case together. And there's a reason why I'm, I'm starting this way, and you will, you will know later why I like that. It's basically because if you're building a custom chassis, I, I would rather build everything as tight and as close as possible to the drivetrain because this is the biggest component in the buggy. So, now that I have my engine, transmission, transmission and transfer case all connected together, uh, I set them at the spot where I like it. So what I did is I basically build a stand to hold my engine at the right level. And as you can see in the picture, I basically set the engine so that it, the, the crankshaft pulley is as far forward as possible. And once again, uh, I set my drivetrain so that I'm thinking as the buggy as a whole is actually in compression. So I want to set the engine as low as, and the whole drivetrain as low as possible to the ground, depending on what ground clearance you want. I was aiming for about 20 to 22 inch uh, belly height. So this means that my whole, the, the lowest point of my drivetrain, which turns out to be the, the back of the transfer case, is approximately. 24 to 25 inches above the ground so i'm giving an extra two inches below the lowest point of the transfer case for extra kind of support where i'm going to build braces and where i'm going to build my belly pan the angle of the engine front to back and side to side is not really that important uh, you can set it to whatever you want uh, really and but it all 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 going to depend on the angle of the drive shafts too so basically, I had my drive shaft already from the previous buggy, so that's why I installed them. You don't have to install them uh, right away. You can just do that later once you're you're done uh, the build at, at the at the final stages of the build. But I had them, and that's why I installed them. So the engine is uh, is set uh, in in its spot, and as you can see, I I kind of eyeball where the drive shafts are going to be. I make sure that I kind of like the positioning. And remember, this is at full bump. Don't forget that. It's at full bump. So meaning that this is this is how my whole chassis is going to sit with the shocks completely compressed with no springs. And, uh, and I pretty much uh, set it this way. And now the next step for me is to look at building a chassis table. So a chassis table, this is where I'm going to put my frame rails and where I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in, in having the, the lowest point of the chassis. And like I said, I normally aim for about two inches below the lowest point of the transfer case. So once everything is in place and I'm happy with the positioning of the drivetrain. Now the really nice thing about the Atlas is actually it is clockable. Uh, meaning that you can actually turn it. There's several different positions where you can install it. So you can actually turn the the front drive shaft output either down or up depending of 
the, how you position the dry the the whole drivetrain. And you know, at this stage, it's it's you try to make it as flat as possible while having a decent angle for the front drive shaft. So uh, you have to remember, you know, it all it's it depends on what axles you have and you know what type of drive uh, drive shafts you're going to be running either single u join or, or double cadron u joints or you know cv joints it's it's up to you so basically this is now all done and the next step uh, that i'm going to do is uh, basically now set up the uh, the table so for the table you can build it from anything that you want really i really like rectangular tubing because it kind of gives you a nice support so basically, what I do is now I kind of try to think, okay, how am I going to get the transmission out of the buggy when I build it? You have a choice, either getting it out from the top or from the bottom, same thing for the engine. So this is what I'm thinking right now when I'm building this uh, this part of the, the chassis. And to me, what I decided is, is to get the transmission and the, and the transfer case out from the bottom. And that's why you see where I put my my chassis uh, a table or jig, uh, basically right at the at the intersection point between the transmission and the and the engine. Uh, I do that uh, because now I can I can easily slide the transfer case back to get it out, and then I can s set the transmission down from that hole. So this is where I, I position my table this way. And now is a critical point to make sure that the table is perfectly flat, level. And the height of the table is now almost going to be exactly your belly height at full compression. So if I was aiming for a 22 inch belly height, what I do now is I subtract from that 22 the amount of shock showing that I want my buggy to have at right height. So for me, I aimed for about 7 inches, for example. So that means that the height of this table must be 15 inches off the ground. So 22 minus 7 is about 15 inches, and, and this is going to be the lowest point of my chassis. Okay, now I'm imagining that my tires are actually installed in, in place, and my whole chassis is built and finished, and the shocks are installed, and there are no springs, so they're completely compressed. Now I see that my belly is approximately 15 inches off the ground. Now you can, this is not set in stone. You can change it up and down as much as you want. You can go as low as 10 inches. It's up to you. It depends on the terrain that you're wheeling. Like for me, I chose to have a 118 inch wheelbase and I didn't want to have a too low of a belly because I get high centers on high centered on obstacles. So I needed to make sure that I had the right belly height. So, about 15 inches, this is what I set my table, I built it all level, and now I'm ready to start bending tube. So, that's it then for today. Uh, this week, I talked about uh, how to choose your drivetrain and how to actually set up the drivetrain for building a chassis. Uh, next week, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to build, to tell you how to actually start bending tube and how to build the main frame uh, for your buggy. So that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments, just put them down in the uh, in the comments uh, below. And don't forget to uh, subscribe and like. If you want me to continue doing these, uh, uh, I will continue doing them as long as I get people who actually watch and like what I do. Thank you and see you next time.